Hey guys, what's up? It's Vic Boo Horror Reviews. Here with a review of a 1968 horror film from director Andy Milligan. I am talking about his famous first feature film in color, The Ghastly Ones. Now, The Ghastly Ones is a movie I've known about for many, many years, uh, mainly because it's one of the infamous video nasties. And it is the one film from Andy Milligan I um, have been wanting to see for the longest uh, time. So I figured, why not sit down and uh, give it a shot after watching nine of his movies beforehand. Uh, not all at once, mind you. I, I watched my first Andy Milligan film last year. <laughs> so this movie has to do with a group of sisters who have to stay at their recently deceased relative's estate on an island for three days in order to collect their inheritance. But there's a fiendish killer on the island who is hell-bent on making sure that doesn't happen. So for those of you who don't know anything about Andy Milligan, he was a gay, low-budget, artur filmmaker um, who is mostly remembered today for his very, very low-budget horror films. Now, I won't lie, I'm actually part of the small cult following he has. Because believe it or not, he has a small fan base, very small mind you, um, of fans who actually really like his movies. And I'm kind of a part of it. So far, like I've previously stated, I've seen nine of his films, not including the one I'm reviewing right now. And out of those nine, I enjoyed four of them. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, uh, my first Andy Milligan film I watched last year, um, and it's still one of my favorites out of everything I've watched um, from him, is his haunted house film from the mid-80s, Carnage, which is very, very enjoyable, kind of um, poltergeist ripoff, I guess. Um, even with the five other movies that I watched from him that I thought were really boring, those being like The Body Beneath and uh, Bloodthirsty Butchers, uh, the rats are coming, the werewolves are here. Um, even those movies, I found myself quite perplexed while watching. While I, like, I didn't enjoy them, I found them really boring, but even when they bored me, they gave off this weird vibe that just kept me going. Andy Milligan was truly a unique cult filmmaker, despite being awful, and I actually enjoy his work quite a bit. So, this movie opens with a couple going on the, on the uh, before-mentioned island. Um, they're not supposed to be there, but they go there anyway. And as a result, they are killed. And you can actually hear in this first murder scene Andy Milligan behind the camera telling the actor, um, th th you know, cutting away, you know, move over. Like, you can hear him giving directions, and it's actually quite an enjoyable and kind of charming moment despite it being really really bad uh so as previously mentioned andy milligan was a cult filmmaker and he is often referred to as one of the worst filmmakers of all time uh worse than ed wood worse than a lot of people personally i don't think he's that bad um i mean i enjoy his movies so that's better than his movies being absolutely horrendously awful or boring um, even though some, even though quite a few of them are. Either way, um, so I don't really have to say much when it comes to actually reviewing this film. Uh, I will kind of go into detail, but the, the gist of it is, on top of the characters being butchered in this film, the basics of filmmaking, such as lighting, proper camera work, editing, and sound are also butchered horribly in this film. Um, they're all pretty bad. Thankfully, um, you can still make out what's being said in the audio and see what's going on for at least most of the scenes. Uh, the nighttime scenes aren't really that clear at all. And the first murder scene is in the dark, too, and it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty rough. Um, but still, if you couldn't, like, vibe with something like Manos the Hands of Fate or, uh, Invasion of the Blood Farmers, then the ghastly ones probably won't be something you'll vibe with either. Uh, it's, 
in my honest opinion, an oddly enjoyable and watchable film, despite being really, really awful and having a pretty slow pace. I'm not even joking when I say the first murder happens in the first five minutes, and you don't get another murder until you're 50 minutes into the movie. Um, but uh, there's enough, like, poor acting and bad editing and cheap looking gory killings albeit they aren't as they aren't as common as I'd like them to be there's enough of that there f for me to have found this movie at least pretty engaging and interesting and I wasn't really that bored watching it um I don't got much else to say um other than this movie obviously isn't for everybody it isn't for cult film fans and it definitely isn't for anybody who uh, is not into cult films. Uh, <laughs> this movie is for the truly sadistic people who want to watch some of the worst shit ever. And for those who are already fans of Andy Milligan. I'd say by... The, by, like, best, I could say, by, like, a normal person's taste standards... It's the kind of put it on in a background movie, you know, um, when you're writing or working on a paper, or doing something, doing doing something, um, at least. Uh, it's it's the kind of movie you put on in the background to uh, just have some background noise, and you essentially just occasionally look at the screen. And when you do look at the screen, you catch some of the better moments of the film, and then you know it's over, and you've you've just wasted 70 minutes of your life. On the gore meter from 1 to 10, what makes something like Nosferatu and 10 being something like Peter Jackson's Brain Dead? The Ghastly Ones sits at a 4. This is quite a gory film for its time. Even, uh, even though this movie came out five years after Blood Feast, the splatter genre really wasn't a genre that hadn't blown up um, yet. Uh, you know, th there were a couple, like, minor titles, like... Um, Carnival of Blood, and, uh, well, that Carnival of Blood came out in 1970, I think, and, uh, The Undertaker and His Pals from 1966, I think, but yeah, this movie contains a pretty decent amount of explicit gore. In conclusion, I would probably have to give this movie maybe a two or two and a half out of five, just because... Even though I found myself enjoying this movie quite a bit, and I would definitely add this to the list of Andy Milligan films I actually enjoyed, it doesn't mean it's it's does doesn't mean it necessarily deserves a high rating, and doesn't necessarily mean it um, isn't an awful movie overall. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, if if you're a normal person who likes normal movies, that don't watch the ghastly ones or any Andy Milligan film. If you like bad movies, I would I would I would say even avoid Andy Milliken films if you like bad movies. Uh, they're they're a very particular kind of cult film that is very uh, that, that is very hard to kind of describe what audience they would appeal to the most. So I'm just going to stop here because this is, this is just taking too way 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 too fucking long. So anyway, guys, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. Signing off. Peace.